it up, extract the DNA, and turn it into a 3D face that could look like you. A lot of my work begins with a question. In this particular case, the question was, what can I learn about someone from a single hair? Once she finds a sample, she takes it to the lab to mine it for DNA and analyze the results. From a cigarette butt, I can learn where someone's ancestors likely came from, their gender, eye color, hair color, complexion. The information is fed into a computer program that generates a 3D model of a face. The way that I'm using code here is a lot like how a sketch artist would use a pencil. It takes about eight hours to print in 3D at NYU's Advanced Media Studio. Then the excess powder is removed to reveal the disembodied face from a stranger's DNA. But there are limitations, like the length of a person's nose or shape of their face cannot be determined. The faces have a general likeness. It might look like a family resemblance. Right now I can't determine age, so all of my masks are aged between 20 and 40. Dewey Hagbord started the project called Stranger Visions after creating her self-portrait two years ago. Now she's hoping it will raise questions about genetic privacy. It's meant to be an exploration at the intersection of art and technology and science, and it's meant to be a provocation. Good job, buddy! Evan! Yeah! Yeah, 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 yeah! Where's your duck? Uh, there it is! There's your duck. Where's your duck? Where's your duck? There it is! Where's your duck? There it is! Yeah, there it is. No. 
Again, total power in one person's hands, not the American way. These damn bills that come out here all the damn time come out here in the last second, and I gotta try to figure out how to vote for my people. How ashamed of are you? Should be. You should be ashamed of yourselves. I'm sick of it. Every year we give power to one person. It was not made that way in the Constitution. He was around when it was written. Now we give it, we pass rules that stop each one of us. Enough! I feel like somebody trying to be released from Egypt. Let my people go! My God, they sent me here to vote for them. They sent me here to fight, vote for them, to argue for them. But I'm trapped. I'm trapped with my rules that have been forced down our throats. Folks, we live in a democracy, but not here, but not here. So you go back and you tell your people, I'd like to do that, but the speaker has so much power, so much control, and each one of us do it in their districts. And have to go back and say that. And you can say on your side of the aisle, oh, no, no, that's not the case. But yes, you do. All of us know you got to deal with it. When's it going to stop? Make a mess again. Clean up. Okay. You're so smart. No, no, you're to face with the biggest beast of all, the Great White. Some of these scuba suited visitors have traveled thousands of miles, paying premium fees. Each plunge is a Russian roulette as crew members chum the waters. And on this day, this routine dive is about to turn into a deadly nightmare. Suddenly, a gargantuan Great White charges straight for the cage snapping, tearing and chopping. Everything goes wrong. It's the worst case scenario. The shark gets inside the cage. The great white's in a frenzy. But what's driving this beast to snap? Good catch, good catch. Good job, you did it. You want to step to the next one? They're sticking to your feet, huh? Yay! Okay. Okay, let's see it. Let's see how you can climb. Good boy. Wow.